Hi, everyone. My name is Colleen. I'm a PhD student at Northwestern. I'll be talking about the project I've been working on under my IASG fellowship, identifying the impacts of urban green space on thermal pollution in the Chicago River. Next slide, please. So the main objectives of this project were to identify the drivers of water temperature in the Chicago River, specifically looking at wastewater discharges, stormwater runoff, um, discharges from building cooling, as well as exchange with Lake Michigan. Um, and our main hypothesis here was that wastewater would have the greatest thermal load. And then the second objective is to compare the effects of green space on water temperature at the buffer and catchment scale. And our hypothesis here was that catchment scale landscape metrics would have a stronger association with water temperature than metrics at the buffer scale. Next slide, please. So for this, we're using data from um, monitoring stations from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District across the North Branch, Main Stem, and South Branch of the Chicago River. Um, and in this graphic here, you can see we have categorized each station according to either being lake-driven, um, what we're calling temperate, or um, extreme. And so in those same graphs, the lake-driven ones are shown in blue, extreme in red, and temperate in yellow-orange. So what we found was that the stations closest to the lake tended to follow really closely the lake water temperature. Um, so those we categorized as lake driven. Um, and then downstream of wastewater treatment plants, we observed this kind of dampening effect where temperatures were warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. So a, a smaller temperature range. And then these extreme stations had a higher summer temperature, lower winter temperature. Next slide, please. And so we calculated the thermal loads for wastewater um, exchange with Lake Michigan and billing cooling discharges. We found that wastewater um, definitely has a warming effect in the winter and kind of this dampening effect slightly cooler in the summer. Um, we found that exchange with Lake Michigan leads to cooler temperatures in the winter and then the building cooling water discharges do have this kind of slight increase in the summer um, warming when they discharge that water. Next slide, please. So preliminary results, like I mentioned, wastewater has the largest overall thermal load. Um, this dampening effect that we're seeing, water exchange with Lake Michigan is bringing cooler water into the system, particularly in the winter, and building cooling water discharges um, provide a significant thermal load, particularly in the summer months when we tend to see higher temperatures overall. Next slide, please. So next steps, um, we're working on estimating the thermal load due to stormwater. And for that, we're modeling the discharge and the temperature using a model called Minuit, the Minnesota Urban Heat Export Tool. And for that, we input a number of different parameters, particularly um, land use parameters for both the catchment area for each monitoring station, as well as the buffer zone. Next slide, please. So the next steps for that are to continue fine tuning that model um, kind of tweaking some of the parameters somewhat, that'll give us an estimate of the thermal load from stormwater runoff, which we can compare and see if we find a stronger association between those catchment metrics at the buffer, I'm sorry, those land use metrics at the buffer scale or the catchment scale, and also estimate the overall thermal load from each of these sources and compare the magnitudes. And that's it. Thank you.